On the wave-latched coast of central Portugal, the Alcabaca Formation captures the Kimmeridgian edge of the Lusitanian Basin, a salt-influenced interface where continent met a shallow Atlantic shelf. First fossils from these beds were noted as early as the 1830 years, and in 1885 Paul Chaffat gathered them into the Couches de Alcabaca, a modern stratotype near Vestiaria now anchors the unit formally. Salt tectonics mattered, the emergent Caldas de Reina Diapir partitioned the coast into lagoons, embayments, and coastal plains, where patch reefs of corals and oysters alternated with river-fed muds. Regional proxies indicate a warm, strongly seasonal climate, at times semi-arid, whose wet, dry oscillations shaped soils, waterways, and the productivity of these coastal systems. Within this mosaic, the Gimaroda coal mine south of Lyria became world famous for exquisitely preserved microvertebrates, especially an unmatched diversity of late Jurassic mammals. Benthic communities dominated by bivalves, with local thickets of corals and calcareous sponges, testify to clear, high-energy windows on the shelf amid quieter, mud-rich stretches. Along the Alcabaca Formation, dense oyster-rich bivalve communities carpeted shore face bars, tidal flats, and sheltered lagoons, filtering nutrient pulses and stabilizing shifting sands between storm-winnowed reefs and river-fed muds. Asteracanthus, a hybodontiform shark around 3 meters long, bore stellate tubercle dorsal fin spines and a battery of high-crowned, multicuspid teeth, unlike the low, rounded crushing teeth now reassigned to Strophidus. Functional inferences indicate an open marine, epibenthic lifestyle and relatively slow swimming, with anterior teeth suited to grasping prey and lateral files adapted for crushing. This toolkit implies broad opportunism with occasional scavenging suggested by Asteracanthus teeth found alongside marine reptile remains. Sleek and mid-sized, hybridus typically reached about 2 meters and carried two near-equal dorsal fins, each preceded by a spine whose apical ribbing and trailing rows of hooked denticles are characteristic. Evidence points to a more active, pursuit-oriented hunter than its bulkier relatives, with a marked taste for swift cephalopods. One famous hybridus hoffianus preserves over a hundred belemnite rostra jammed in its stomach, an overindulgence likely sealing its fate and leaving an unambiguous snapshot of its prey. Its mixed dentition, grasping teeth in front and flatter crushing batteries behind, together with stout dorsal spines that likely served as defensive armament, paints a portrait of a versatile predator comfortable switching between soft-bodied quarry and shelly fare. Prosenides, a late Jurassic pycnodontid, is known from beautifully preserved skeletons in the Salnhofen archipelago and Saren, with species showing the classic deep, laterally compressed profile and pavement-like molariform teeth suited to crushing. Its ecology tracks the pycnodont playbook, agile maneuvering in structured coastal settings, reefs, sandbars and lagoons, where hard-shelled prey predominated, even as rare relatives evolved piranha-like cutting dentitions. Within that mosaic of niches and competition, Prosenides likely browsed the seafloor for benthic fare with its crushing batteries while opportunistically taking softer items, a versatile reef-edge forager rather than a sprinting predator. Small-bodied teneogenes, about 50 centimeters and likely under half a kilogram, carried a long, gracile skull armed with numerous conical teeth, traits that secure it among caristodeers. Its habits point to quiet freshwater channels and ponds where it snapped up insects and small fishes, an ecological through-line seen across Jurassic caristodeers. In the Morrison record it is genuinely scarce with that scarcity best read as a taphonomic and collecting bias against tiny aquatic animals rather than true absence. Among the squamates, 
the armored paramacelidid lizard Baclesius and the stem snake Portugalophus lignites mark a striking early Lepidosaur diversity in the Kimmerigian lagunal, coal swamps here, the latter ranking among the oldest snakes known. A recent review of the Gimaroda assemblage erected Marmoretta dreskeri from dozens of cranial and postcranial pieces, whose paired premaxillae with a deep maxillary facet, fused narrow frontals, and long, slender subpleurodont dentaries clinch its identity. Tiny and lizard-like, Marmoretta likely clambered through vegetation rather than paddling in pools, hand and trunk anatomy point to adaptations for clinging arboreality. Its presence in a Kimmerigian, mangrove-like wetland extends the genus into the late Jurassic and underscores ongoing faunal links across Europe even as crown squamates were beginning their broader radiation. The turtle fauna here bridges lineages, from the Stempluridire platicholes, likely a shallow water lagoon dweller, to the Paracryptodoran peltocholes, signaling a mosaic of brackish to freshwater habitats along this Kimmerigian coast. Noech cassicus, once folded into Theriosuchus, is a very small, short-snout adiposaurid, about 55 cm long, represented by hundreds of specimens from the Kimmerigian Gimaroda lignites. Its world was a tidally pulsed, brackish lagoon complex, effectively mangrove-like, where coal-forming wetlands and quiet channels concentrated plants, invertebrates and microvertebrates. Within this mosaic it likely foraged on small prey, chiefly invertebrates, amphibians and mammals, working the shallows and littered margins while larger crocodiliforms exploited deeper or more open water. Goniophilus looked crocodile-like, yet carried a distinctive paravertebral shield, two parallel rows of broad, rectangular osteoderms locked by pegan groove joints with laterally downturned margins. Functional work on goniofolidid skeletons links this closed armor bracing to a stiffened trunk that aided stability in water and during bankside lunges, fitting their modern croc analog of semi-aquatic ambush predation. In Iberia, the Kimmerigian species Goniophilus baroglyphius records an early presence of the lineage, showing these predators were already settled along late Jurassic wetlands of Europe. Broad-skulled and blunt-toothed, this teleosaurid prowled the same coastal wetlands and embayments as Steniosaurus, a pairing documented from the Kimmerigian and again in Tythonian western France. Its toolkit, robust, low-crowned teeth with complex serration-like structures, aligns with a durophagus, turtle-eating habit, a view strengthened by solitaurin shell scarred and even pierced by splintered Macamosaurus teeth. Bite marks on a Swiss sauropod femur match Macamosaurus, hinting at shoreline ambush or opportunistic scavenging alongside its hard-shelled fare. Vertebral articulation patterns further imply an open-sea swimmer powered by lateral tail undulation, with limbs for steering and enlarged basiocipital tub era anchoring the muscles that drove decisive head-first dives. Skimming the Jurassic air, sea margin, Rampharynchus ranged from handspan juveniles to a confirmed giant with an about 1.8 meters wingspan, among the largest non-pterodactyloids known. Its long, intermeshing teeth and repeated gut contents of fish make a strong case for a mainly passivorous lifestyle, rather than generalized scavenging. Claims of a cranial crest have not withstood re-examination, UV and visible light studies found Broly's 1927 crest to be a preservational artifact. Ontogenetic data show near-isometric wing growth and support precocial flight, with juveniles likely using different foraging niches from adults as they matured. Endocasts reveal a large flocculus and vestibular system, consistent with a head held roughly horizontal in flight and fine control over aerial maneuvers above the water. In 2007, a partial skeleton from Casal Novo, tooth, vertebrae and ribs, limb elements and plate fragments, was referred to Stegosaurus ungulatus, marking the first indisputable occurrence of Stegosaurus outside North America. 
The material includes a small cervical plate and caudals with transversely expanded, grooved neural spines, a hallmark character set that anchors the referral to Stegosaurus. Taphonomically, the bones lay in a coarse, high-energy river channel lag within abandoned alluvial plain deposits, consistent with a lowland browser moving through floodplains and levees. In life, the animal would have carried a staggered array of thin, highly vascular plates along the back and a spiked tail, the plates have long been linked to display and possible thermoregulation, while the thagomizer is backed by direct evidence of defensive use against theropods. Biogeographically, this Portuguese record strengthens the case for a late Jurassic interchange between Europe and Western North America via an episodic, Newfoundland, Iberia, corridor across the Proto-North Atlantic. The articulated holotype from Porto dos Barcas preserves vertebrae, an ilium, a complete left hind limb plus a right femur, establishing the small Dryosaurid Eaustriosaurus from western Portugal. In life it was a fleet, about 1.6 meters biped with a uniquely reduced hallux and long shins, well suited to quick browsing along levees and channels of a coastal plain system punctuated by brackish incursions. Its complete PES and other autopomorphies refine how we trace convergent reduction of the ornithopod foot and, alongside new Iberian iguanodontians, underscore a broader late Jurassic dryomorph radiation in the region. Discovered on the coastal cliffs at Porto de Nero and described in 1999, the holotype preserves an articulated series of posterior cervicals and dorsals with ribs, and even a clutch of about 100 gastroliths, giving this Portuguese diplodocid an unusually intimate fossil snapshot. In life it was a long-necked, whip-tailed browser, and, by analogy with diplodocoid snout shape and microware studies, likely fed low to the ground in near-coastal fluvial, deltaic landscapes documented for the region. Phylogenetically, several analyses nested close to Supersaurus, a result that strengthens evidence for late Jurassic ties between Iberia and the dinosaur faunus of western North America. In coastal West Portugal, a tight set of bones and teeth pinned Ceratosaurus to these late Jurassic lowlands, the associated right femur and left tibia from Rodela do Valmateo, plus tooth from Porto das Barcas and other isolated crowns, match the genus and lie closest to Ceratosaurus dentosulcatus. The femur measures 65 cm, about a 560 kg animal by limb scaling, capturing a medium-large predator in the local guild. In life it wore the genus's hallmark look, prominent nasal horn and deep, blade-toothed jaws, well suited to lunging strikes along river margins and floodplains. Indeed, the Portuguese material comes from fluvial sandstones laid down on floodplains, a setting consistent with bankside ambush and short bursts across bars and levees. Biogeographically, the find secures Ceratosaurus in Europe and tightens the Morrison, Iberia link, reinforcing evidence for transatlantic interchange late in the Jurassic. Named in 2003 from the Gimaroda mine, Aviadoranis rests on a tiny right ilium from early Kimmerigian beds, with a fragmentary second ilium, a proximal ischium, and small theropod teeth referred to the taxon. Long read as a very basal tyrannosauroid, its hip morphology has lately been argued to align instead with early ornithomimosaurs, leaving this diminutive coalurosaur as either one of Europe's oldest tyrannosauroids or the earliest known ornithomimosaur. Either way, it signals a small, swift predator threading through the lagunal, coal, swamp mosaic of Gimaroda and pushes the European record of key coalurosaur lineages deeper into the late Jurassic. Tiny but telling, Dryolestes is anchored by a well-toothed lower jaw and rare postcranials, including a humerus with an incipient trochlea, that tighten our view of its build. Its dentition's shearing crests and ethereal-like inner ear point to a small, agile generalist, probably insect-focused and either ground-running or lightly scansorial rather than aquatic or saltatory. Because Gimaroda yields an exceptionally large Jurassic mammal sample, 
the Portuguese dryolests has become a benchmark for reconstructing early Thurian auditory evolution and fine-scale ecology within Europe's late Jurassic wetlands. Culminating this coastal story, the Alcabaca Formation has yielded one of the world's richest late Jurassic mammal records, with tens of thousands of microvertebrate remains concentrated in lagoonal wetlands episodically flooded by the sea. Its fauna spans Stemtherian dryolestoids, the docodont haldanodon and diverse pulchophadiid and penhyrodontid multituberculates, a breadth that records dietary and habitat partitioning from insectivory and omnivory to semi-aquatic specialization. Because these fossils preserve key cranial and ear structures, most famously the coiled cochlear canal of dryolests, they anchor tests of early Thurian sensory evolution and fix a high-resolution baseline for Jurassic mammalian diversity in Europe.